Uh, yeah, I, I, I hope you guys are good. Uh, welcome back. Yeah, as, as I promised uh, that I will be uh, coming back uh, with a story, you know. And the reason why I, I do this from time to time is because I want to constantly remind people that what you always see on social media is is not the actual reality, you know? And the lavish lifestyles that you always see on social media, the behind the scenes, you know, the behind the scenes for those type of lifestyles, they should always remind you that life is 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 getting i don't know but yeah life is not what you always expect it to be you know besides you being motivated and all that nonsense okay not nonsense but yeah and all that those fleshy lifestyles that you see there's always pain behind you know and I constantly need to remind you guys that you should always remember that we were not born or basically I was not born knowing what I know or having what I have. You understand? I've been through a lot. So as I stated before uh, that I'm... Um, I'm 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 writing a book about my life and all that. Uh, so this is part zero, basically, like the introduction and all that, you know, the introduction, like from start and all that. So unfortunately, uh, this live video is live. You can only watch it live. I'm not going to save it afterwards. Uh, please understand my decision. So. Uh, as I'll be starting, you know. Uh, now I'm talking to you guys as, as, as uh, Hobotso Mutlani, you know. Hobotso Mutlani, uh, not coach. The story that I will be sharing with you guys has nothing to do with coach, but it has everything to do with because that was the build up into becoming coach you understand because one thing i hate the most is to have so many followers on social media who don't even know what they are following or who they are following you understand so in case you don't know uh, this will put clarity to so many things because not knowing or understanding who you're following ends up giving you wrong impressions about people, you know. For example, when you come to my timeline and you see this nice cars and nice lifestyle and automatically the first thing which comes to your mind is this guy is bragging. That's going to be the first thing if you don't know. But if you know... The first thing that's going to come to your mind, you know that this guy is actually celebrating, you know, because I've been posting when I was poor. So I won't stop posting even now. I've been posting when I was poor. It's just that nobody was watching. As you know, life, nobody is watching when you, you, you have nothing. They only want to see when you have something. And then when they see that you have something, they're starting to follow you and plan and wait for your downfall. Unfortunately, some of us, the God that we pray does not wear a trouser. The God that we pray does not ask for tithe every Sunday from people, you know. Uh, the God that I pray is a true God. <laughs> Whatever that you might wish on me is going to come on to you and your family. I'm telling you, it's not a joke. That's the kind of God I pray, you know. But nonetheless, uh, I hope everyone who's 
uh, watching is watching from a good point of view and not vice versa. So basically, um, I would like to believe that I was actually conceived. Uh, conceived simply means that an inter a, a sexual intercourse took place. Uh, by the way, I'm that stupid whereby I'll be disclosing almost all details, you know. I believe it's 2 a.m. right now and kids are sleeping. If you are here, you must be an adult. So I believe that I was conceived in 1994, right? Conceived in 1994 when um, apartheid just ended, you know. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't see anything or remember anything. So my parents had sex uh, in 1994. Since I was born in May, that simply means that they probably had sex just around maybe like August, I think. Yeah, like August, I think. Yeah. And then uh, the way my mom tells me is that uh, when I was still inside her stomach uh, i used to be playful you know kicking and all that like other kids and she didn't have much of cravings you know she didn't have much cravings when she was carrying me the way she puts it you know and even me personally i don't remember being in my mother's stomach and hungry i don't remember being hungry you know in her stomach I don't even remember anything. You know, life is funny. I don't even remember a single little thing. So, my mom, obviously, poverty, you know, uh, Limpopo conditions, poverty. And she said that I was not planned. To put it correct, I'm a mistake, you know. Uh, I was not planned. I'm a mistake. Now... <laughs> This simply means that if, had it been modern times like now, uh, had it been modern times like now, I think I would have been aborted, you know? And I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with people who are, are abort kids or do uh, things like that, just in case you're watching and you've done an abortion. Uh, I'm not referring to you. Don't feel guilty. However, but I was a mistake. A mistake simply means that my mom says that she didn't know that she was going to fall pregnant. You know? And it's funny. It's funny because how can you have sex and not know that you might fall pregnant? Like, I don't get it, though. I'm like... But obviously... Most of us, most of us are mis we are mistakes. In a sense, our parents didn't plan us. You understand? Our parents didn't plan us, but as soon as they found out that we are here or we are there, they kept us. We should always be thankful for that because we could have been aborted easily. Uh, and shout out to our parents for not using condoms because if they used condoms, uh, we we wouldn't be here so mommy thank you <laughs> thank you a lot <laughs> you're motivating me uh, so yeah i mean you know one plus one happened you know and she said that she was actually working throughout carrying me as her first son you know with depression, um, family, she was about 19 years old, I think. Family, they were judging her, you know. Uh, external family members were constantly reminding my mom and my grandmother at that time. Because obviously, the father was automatically poor, you know. The father was not ready to, to have a kid. He was automatically poor, you know. That's just life. <laughs> Which is why you must always plan to have kids, to avoid your kids having to, su to suffer here. You know, so my mom was pushing, she was working. And family, family was constantly saying, how is uh, 
sorry, how is my mom going to take care of me? Because we are poor, you know? They they wanted to see, like they wanted to see, Hori, how is she going to raise me, you know? As much as we love family, but sometimes I feel like these external families, they are our greatest enemies. Like they are more dangerous than people who write a bad tweet about you on social media. I think family is much more dangerous than what you think, you know. So yeah, they were, they were saying, want to see how she's going to raise this child, you know. But God has his own ways, honestly. I mean... God has his own ways. Throughout the pregnancy of not having health care, not going to checkups regularly, the way she says it, she was just eating spinach. Spinach pap almost every day and cabbage potatoes every day. She hardly went to checkups, clinics, everything. But I survived somehow. somehow. I survived with just that inside her stomach, you know. And I'll, I'll forever... Be grateful for that, you know, because I naturally, you know, we always thank our moms more than our fathers because the father does one thing only, and that is just to come inside. Then they have a choice to leave or a choice to stay, but they are not really forced to stay. They can easily leave, trust me, but a mom can actually never leave you. That's just the truth. So, uh, towards eight months, toward, towards eight months, uh, just about a month before I was born, uh, she, she went to a checkup, you know, just to see how far uh, I am into coming to earth. Remember, I didn't know anything at that time, you know. So, when she was at the clinic, there was this family that we know of and my mom is telling me these things now there was this family which said to her that um what were you thinking what were you thinking uh making a child where else you know you are poor you know now you're about to to give birth you can't even afford pampas. Even at that time, there were no pampas. There was no pampas at that time. Nevaberikisa, they were using what we call maleiri. Maleiri, it's like, it's like a cloth. It's like a cloth, so. Like, they, yeah, it used to be cloth. Yeah, something like, a, I wouldn't say a dress, but like a cloth, yeah. So, they were told, telling my mom, this fair other family of ours, that how is she going to take care of me? Because the father is broke, poor, you are poor as well, but here you are. Uh, but obviously, she just kept on praying that something will come up, you know. Now, when I was born, on the 17th of May, 1995, when I was born, I was actually born around, the way she tells me, uh, around 2 to 3 a.m. in the morning. I was born around 2 to 3 a.m. in the morning. And there was this family. You know life. <laughs> life is something else. There was this family which was financially stable, right? And what they did is that they bought packs of uh, malaria. When I say malaria, malaria I'm referring to a, a synonym for pampas they used to use malaria back in the days they bought like packs right and one of the families the, the members in that family which was stable which was related to us they they had enough to give my mom something but they didn't you know and then my grandmother uh, the way she says it, she came to the hospital with her old clothes. You know, my grandmother used to do this sewing things. She had these machines, sewing and everything. So what she did, she took all her, uh, her 
old clothes and then she turned them into malaria. She turned them into nappies. Yes. Yeah, that's the right word that I was looking for for that word. Thank you, Tepo, for that word. Yeah, nappies, diapers. So she turned her old clothes into diapers or nappies. Right? Just so that I could have something to wear from the hospital. Ne? Okay, fine. Uh, my granny came with those things and then they covered me and all that. I was happy. When I say I was happy, I don't mean I remember that I was happy. No, I simply mean that they say I was healthy. Much more healthier as if my mom was eating the yogurt or these nice things. But she was just eating cabbage and pap and potatoes almost every day. That's why I don't want to eat cabbage. Even today, I don't eat cabbage. Because I've eaten cabbage nine months insta inside my mother's stomach. So I can never eat cabbage again. Never. I'm tired. So, uh, when it was time to, to, to go home, then the other family, which was financially stable, they had a car. They came in and then they fetched them. And then um, my grandmother asked for leave. For lift, I mean, you know, and then they said that they are not going home. Where else it was a lie. They were going home. And then uh, when it was time for me to go home, finally, uh, my mom and my grandmother were forced to walk, like walk from the clinic. I was actually born in a clinic, not not hospital. So they walked uh, till they got home. They walked covering me with uh this warm things you know i was wearing t-shirts at stipers i'm a kid man i didn't know anything you know i didn't know anything it's 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 it was not my fault that things were were that way you know now when we got home the my grandmother used to heal small children you know there's small children uh, who have problems with there's this thing here this problem which uh, small babies usually have the the there's a color change on the what do you call this yeah whatever you call this yeah so she used to do that then a few days i started having that problem and then my grandmother healed me you know she healed me and then that's when my life was starting now and the way my grandmother puts it is that she's the one who has actually taking care of me better than my mom because my mom had to go to work right and then my mom at that time where she was working she said that she was earning about i think it was around about 15 rand not more than 20 rands where she was working i don't remember what she was doing but she was earning about not more than 20 rands you know uh, so my grandmother used to take care of me, you know, and she says that I was never really a cry baby. I was not the type to cry and all that. Nah, I was not the type. So as 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 time went by, I starting I started developing like babies, you know, like normal babies, and the other family. They had a child who's, I would say, is almost the same age as me, living the life, you know, uh, making fun of the current, the state that we were at at that time, you know. Uh, and these are the things which constantly, constantly remind me that it's very, 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 very important to never change who you are, you know? It's very important to never change who you are because once you change who you are, you start losing yourself, you know? And once you start losing yourself, that's where you start changing on people and, 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 and all those things, you know? Now, time went by and I reached one year. On my first birthday, first birthday, 
my mom i don't know how she did it but she 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 made me a party i still have the photos back home you know she made me a party without having having money to make a party just to celebrate my one year she did that you know and that's